mentioned the three areas that we've been um, working on in terms of developing higher apprenticeships. Um, I'll focus a little bit more on the middle one at, at, uh, at the moment. That's something we've been working on for the last year <coughs> in London, working with a whole range of, of colleges um, in South East London, working with Chambers of Commerce in London, working with NHS Trust, working with um, some of the banks, working with the CFA, which is the Council for Administration, the stands at the Sector Skills Council for Business Administration and Management, and working with Financial Services um, Partnership, which is the Sector Skills Council for covering banking, etc. So we've been we've been working to develop a foundation degree uh, in business and professional administration, and. What we tried to do in this, we've, we've, we've sort of learned a lesson from um, one of the things that happened with our engineering apprentices. And that is that um, we got a cohort of 12 or 13 on the first year of the foundation degree, and they've got, gone through into the second year and doing really well. But the, but the apprenticeship required them to do the MVQ4 and the foundation degree and we haven't had a lot of take up of the MVQ4 and that's the companies themselves and the individuals have elected to just do the foundation degree. So in developing the business of uh, professional admin um, foundation degree um, and higher apprenticeship framework, what we've, what we've done is mapped the foundation degree across national occupation standards as a foundation degree, it has uh, very important work-based elements, work-based learning elements. That we've got core modules, specialist modules, which um, will be similar to any foundation degree in business and, and, and admin. But in the work-based modules, we're assessing both the foundation degree and the competence elements for the MVQ alongside each other. So what we're attempting to do with this, and it's going through validation at the moment for a 2012 start, is to embed the MVQ within the foundation degree. So that you haven't got two, two costs, if you like, and you haven't got two sets of assessment, you've got, you've got an integrated assessment, um, and you've got something which is pretty clear cut as far as the employer and the higher apprenticeship, higher apprentices concerned. I want to just talk a bit about these entry points because I think um, it's, it's really important that we uh, focus in terms of the design of this and its progression into uh, honours degrees and further to professional uh, membership really important that employers are involved in that process and we've got we've had employers involved um, in, 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 in this design and the way we'll be moving forward we will get employers involved even further in, in, in making sure it fits their needs but it's also vital that it fits the needs of these cohorts different cohorts of potential mm -hmm. learners If, you, if we look at um, advanced apprentices, the research we, we've been doing is, is, is really interesting in terms of, of, of how it's um, showing how advanced apprentices progress into higher, higher education generally. Numbers are uh, quite significant now. From that Hefke report in 2009, that was based on uh, the cohorts progressing in 2002-03. We, we, we've been looking at 2005-06 as a whole cohort progressing over three years, uh, sorry, four years. Um, and then we've looked at the immediate progression of each cohort since then. The numbers are building. And I'll have to read this, and I'll have to hold it a bit far away, because I don't want to wear my glasses. Um, between 2005 and 9, the number of advanced level apprentices achievers 
increased by 36%. So that's, that, that's the number of apprentices in the, in, in, in the population. And the number of entering higher education of those increased by 69%. That's a real terms increase of 24%. So not only is the volume going up, but there is an increase in the proportion going into higher education. That's higher, edu higher education generally. And we're looking, uh, uh, we're analysing the results of this research to see if there are any particular indicators that, that, that help us. In looking at the London population, uh, where there are lots of higher education providers, lots of them providing part-time higher education, the proportion of, say, business uh, apprentices going on to higher education is quite high, 20%. In other places, it's a lot lower. In different regions, it's higher. So the northeast and the northwest, the overall progression rate of apprentices is a lot higher than it is down in the southeast, and it's almost at its lowest generally in the east of England and, and London. So we're trying to sort of see what, what, what that is. But the gut feeling I've got is that it's, it's lack of readily available, flexibly delivered, part-time higher education courses. And we all know that universities, for example, um, often don't have part-time courses. They have full-time courses that you can do in a part-time mode. And if you do a... So you could be, see yourself as a part-time student, but this semester you might be do, doing it on a Thursday, that semester on a Wednesday, <coughs> and it changes all over because it's not you that's important, it's the course that's important. Mm -hmm. um, and so these sorts of programmes aren't, aren't readily accessible by somebody who's in the workplace, has to negotiate with their, with their employer when they, when, they, when they go off and do it. So advanced apprentices will be a key cohort here, I think. It's a, it will be opening up doors for them. School and college leavers, we've already talked about the fact, and Ian mentioned the fact that, that, that um, when faced with the cost of going away from home, £9,000 fees per year um, and the additional support costs, then to be able to stay at home, get a job locally, a higher, a higher apprenticeship locally and get your degree that way while you're earning a wage, there's going to be quite a, a, a lot of these people, I think, who will be looking in the next few years at higher apprenticeships quite positively. And the third cohort is the people in the existing workforce. And I think that um, that's an interesting one because they're not all invisible. You know, it's not that you have to advertise to go and find them. They are actually people who've left colleges two or three years ago and they're probably still, you know, alumni of the colleges. They probably still know where they've gone to. Uh, they still know their employers. So they can be marketed to. Um, but employers have, have pointed out that there are a number of people in, the, in their existing workplace who they would want to look through a programme like the Business uh, Professional Admin Programme, who just are there, but they haven't got a degree, they just never did it, they went into the workplace, they got the qualifications to do it, but this will provide them with a, 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 a way of doing it. <coughs> 